Hi folks, it's Ron with the Aurora Chasers, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the MyOps Water Drop Splash Kit. So let's dive in. So a little over a week ago now, Marquetta was working on a project that involved the four elements, fire, earth, water, and wind, and she needed a water drop photo. If you're not familiar with the MyOp Splash Water Drop Kit, the way the Water Drop Kit works is by dropping multiple droplets, triggering your camera, and triggering your flash at the exact moment those droplets collide. So it's going to drop the first drop, which will drop into the glass, splash back up, the second drop collides into it, and at that moment, if you get the timing right, the flash will trigger and freeze the action of that splash. Now, I've had the water drop kit for a couple of years, and I've played with it in the past and really enjoyed it. Uh, it had been sitting in the gear closet for a little while, and so I dug it back out and tried to do some shots with it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it to work initially, so I thought maybe the battery had died over that uh, time, and so I replaced the battery. That didn't work either. Uh, what ended up happening is I had to go to MyOps' website, I sent them off an email, and support got back to me almost immediately with a set of instructions for how to clean the solenoid valve. Uh, I followed those instructions and it worked great. We did a video on that, so if you want to learn how to do that, uh, you can find that in the description uh, below. Now, if you're not familiar with MyOps, they make an array of photography tools that connect to your camera and allow you to do different things. Um, I primarily use their high-speed photography tools for things like uh, balloon bursts or light bulb explosions or things like that. Uh, this water drop kit was one of the many tools that I've enjoyed from MyOps over the years. As I was digging around on the MyOps website, I realized that they had come up with a newer, improved version of the water drop kit. And I was intrigued because it solved several issues that I'd had with the previous version. The first issue is there's no more battery. They now have a USB charge port in the device. The second issue was I always had to try to figure out a way to mount it. There wasn't a proper mounting system. Now they resolved that issue by sending us a magic arm and this clamp device that allows you to attach it to a tripod or a light stand or something else. Uh, basically, it's a cell phone tripod but it works really great in this application, as I'll demonstrate later. I was getting ready to do a demo and a review on this product and realized that maybe this newer version would be a better option. So I reached out to MyOps, and in full disclosure, they did send us the new version to try out and to demo for this video. Um, so we'll get to show you the new version, and I'll talk about the pros and the cons and the things that I really like about this new version at the end. This video is not sponsored by MyOps. They did send us the device, but they are not paying us, and they are not reviewing the video before we produce the content. So I am free to say what I want to say about the device, and I will have a couple of things at the end that I think can be improved. Uh, but overall, I do really like the device, and that is my genuine opinion. Now, as far as the old versus the new, as I mentioned, there's a USB power port, which solves the need to replace batteries before you'd have to unscrew several screws to replace the battery. It comes with that mounting bracket, and the nozzle is a little bit smaller, which seems to give it a little bit better control of the water drops. And the whole thing overall has been redesigned, and weight seems to have been reduced. Uh, it's a nice solid fill, but it definitely feels a little bit lighter and more agile, so I really enjoyed that. And the biggest key factor is that the consistency of this device seems to be much better overall than the previous version. So if you'd seen reviews where folks were having mixed consistencies, they weren't able to get water drops very consistent, I did test several methods, which we'll get into, and I did find a way to get very consistent drops out of it, much better than the previous version. So if you've watched some of those reviews about maybe the older version, double check and see which version it is, uh, because I did find the consistency to be significantly better in this version than the previous version. Over the course of a week of playing with this device and reviewing it, we tried three different methods to capture these water drop shots. We tried two different ways of triggering the camera and one way of triggering through flash trigger mode. So which method worked best? For us, what we found was that using rear curtain sync gave us the most consistent results. The first method was to trigger the camera and use the high speed sync of our flashes to freeze the motion. Unfortunately, that led to pretty mixed results and we ended up with a lot of motion blur due to the pulsing of the strobes at that high speed sync and the high power output. The second method was also to trigger through the camera but to use rear curtain sync. 
Now, to do this on a Sony a7 III, you have a 1 250th of a second max sync speed. So we set it to that, set it to rear curtain flash, and we triggered the camera and again let the camera trigger the flash units. This gave us the most consistent results, and we were able to get shot after shot after shot timed perfectly. So that's the method we ultimately ended up using. But initially we had some issues because we were doing it in daylight and at 250th of a second, we were still seeing some motion blur. Our next attempt was to use the flash trigger mode. Now to use this method, we waited until it got dark. And that's important because in this method, it's going to use the bulb mode on your camera. Using the flash trigger mode in the dark did give good results, but they weren't consistent. And so what we did is used a dark environment, set it to rear curtain sync, 1 250th of a second, and we triggered the flash from the camera, but we used camera trigger mode. Setup of the device is fairly painless with the new hardware. What you'll need is a camera, a tripod, preferably a macro lens, the Myop Splash water drop kit, at least one strobe, a bowl or glass, and a larger bowl or plate to catch the water. What you want to do is mount the clamp bracket to the magic arm and then attach that to a tripod or in this case I used a light stand. And the reason for that is the light stand allowed me to adjust the height which will be important later. Next you want to get your water ready. So what I like to do is add a little bit of food coloring and I use a water soluble food coloring Mix that in with my water so that I can pour it into the hopper of the device later. Once you're ready, go ahead and fill the water drop kit with your mixture of water. Then set the cap on top of the device and let it kind of slowly settle into place. If you press it into place, it will squirt out water all over the place, so be careful about that. Next, you want to measure the height. My ops suggest starting at 25 centimeters from the top of your water level to the bottom of the nozzle, and that's what we did here. We uh, built ourselves a little tool, we took a little metal straw, measured out 25 centimeters, and then used our straw to measure the height and then the position of the water drops. So that's the next thing you want to do, is take that little straw, dangle it from the nozzle, and make sure that your water drops are falling center of your glass or bowl or whatever your water container is. You can also use this straw, dangling it from this same position, make sure that it's exactly where the water drop's gonna fall, and then you can use that for setting focus, which is what we did. Another method I found that worked pretty well is to release a couple of drops using the app and let the water drop fall on the straw while the straw is laid across the glass and then set your focus on that. You wanna make sure that it's set uh, so that you're getting the nicest, crispest shots possible. After that, you wanna set your camera angle. And ideally, I like to shoot this with an angle that's fairly low. I wanna see just barely the surface of the water because what I'm primarily interested in is capturing that water drop. So I set the angle fairly low and use a nice backdrop. Next thing is to connect the cables, either to the camera, the flash, or both, depending on which triggering mode you're using. Now, you can use a studio strobe, you can use a speed light, uh, any kind of a flash unit will work. What I like to do is position two strobes. I like one kind of back and to the left of the image, and that kind of acts like a kicker light and gives me a nice edge light on my water drop. And typically I like a large soft box or a strip box for that light. And then the second light uh, I'll put in the front at about a 45 degree angle camera right. Now with camera trigger mode, we only need one cable going to the device in addition to the USB power supply cable. In this case, what I've done is connected the water drop kit's camera port into my shutter release port on my camera. This way the MyOps will trigger your camera. Now what I've done with my setup is I've used the Flashpoint R2 Pro 2S to trigger my flashes. You can use any other method of triggering from your camera to your flash as long as the camera is signaling the flash units themselves. There's several different ways to do that and your method is gonna vary depending on your setup. We'll now need to connect our USB power cable. Once plugged in, you should start to see the light flash. Now with flash trigger mode, there's gonna be a little bit more involved. You're gonna set up the camera's port just like before, but you're also going to send a cable over to either your flash unit itself, or in my case, over to the R2 Pro 2 controller, which will trigger the flashes. So both cables will be connected in this case. This is going to allow the water drop kit to trigger your camera in bulb mode, 
drop two droplets, and then fire the flash at the exact moment of collision. Now we did get pretty mixed results with this method, and so we ended up going back to shooting in the dark with our flashes at the lowest power setting and in rear curtain sync mode, in camera trigger mode, and we got much more consistent and much sharper images. The way strobes work is they pulse light. So the lower the output, the less duration that light pulses and the more action you're going to freeze. The higher the output, the longer that pulse is and the more motion blur you're gonna see. Now we need to get into the phone settings. If you haven't already, download the MyOps mobile app. Once it's installed, go ahead and launch the app. It's gonna search for devices. And if your MyOps splash is powered on, it's going to find it. Click the check mark. And you can see my settings from the last setup I did. So let's walk through this. In this case, I'm using a two drop setup and I am triggering the camera, which as I mentioned, ended up being our best results. So what I've done here is if I click on the first drop, it's going to bring up the drop size and that's in milliseconds. So that's how long the valve is open to make that first drop. The longer the valve is open, the larger the drop size will be. Next, we see the second drop. So we click on second drop and we can again set the drop size. Now it's important to notice there is a delay function in this case. The delay is going to be the time between the first drop and then the second drop. So that's one of the important factors to get right. Um, you can use MyOps's preferred settings from their website to get started, and we found those to work pretty well. But we ultimately wanted to reconfigure this to get drop sizes that we wanted. The next setting is the camera. So we need to set the trigger method. In this case, camera, or you could choose flash if you wanted to trigger your flash. But we're going to trigger off the camera, and then we need to set the delay. We can't give you ideal settings because every time it's a little bit different. And so start off with their settings and then go from there. One other thing that I should mention is different cameras and different triggering modes had different shutter lag. And so you want to delve into the settings if you're having some issues with that. When I was using bulb mode, for example, the shutter was triggering way too quick. And by the time the action had happened, my camera was just starting to fire. So I had to set the shutter lag to, in my case, 250 milliseconds, and then click Save. That was for flash trigger mode. I did find that for camera trigger mode, zero was just fine. And Marquetta saw some discrepancies between her Canon versus what I was getting with the Sony. So play around with that setting as well. Once we've got it all set up, very simple. Press our button. It triggers the device and then triggers our flashes. And then just keep playing with the timing of these things. If you're having some struggles, you can use your iPhone in high speed frame rate mode to see what the water drops are doing and kind of see the exact moment they're colliding and see when your flash is triggering. That'll help you set these adjustments. It does take a little bit of time playing around with it, but after some time, you'll get pretty good at it and you'll kind of get it figured out. Um, just keep in mind that the delay between the two drops is going to have an effect and then the delay between the second drop and the camera is going to have an effect. So first time out the two drops, make sure they're actually colliding as you'd like and then time out the camera delay to make sure your flashes are triggering and your camera's going off at the exact moment of that collision. The other thing that we found is that it's better to let the water settle down in between shots. So when you have some ripples and stuff, sometimes the water drops hit at a different angle and they don't quite collide correctly, things like that. So we like to let it settle down in between shots. It just takes a few seconds and it ends up giving much more consistent results. Another thing I tried was using xanthan gum. And I got that idea from First Man Photography. I'll link to his channel in the description below. Go ahead and check out some of his videos and make sure that you're getting the consistency correct because a little bit of xanthan gum really does go a long way. But it really improves the consistency of the shots and the consistency of the water drops themselves and just how they look overall. I really liked it and you can thicken it up a little bit. You can make it thinner uh, to get different things. Some of the ideas that I tried was putting the xanthan gum in just the glass itself for a while with pure water coming out of the water drop kit. And then I added the, the xanthan gum mixture to the water drop kit for some different results. So what are my final thoughts on this device? Well, I really like it and I really like the improvements. 
You can do this without this device, but it is much more difficult and it's hard to get consistent results. I used to do this in the past using a Ziploc bag, dangling it and letting one corner kind of hang at the bottom, poking a tiny little hole in it and trying to time those droplets. And I could get like one out of a hundred shots. This device makes it a lot easier for me to capture consistent results time after time. So I really like it. Uh, I do like the improvements. The improvements made a huge difference as far as the consistency, uh, not having to deal with that battery issue, having an easy mount system. I'm really glad to see that they've listened and, and added all of those features. That said, there is still some room for improvement, especially on the app side of things. The app has been recently redesigned, so make sure you have the latest version and that you've got the latest firmware updates. But I did find it a bit cumbersome to have to go into the settings, adjust the setting, make sure I clicked save, and then back out and go to the next setting. It would be really nice if there was some kind of a scroll adjustment on each setting so that I could set it right from the main menu and not have to go back and forth. I got tripped up by that a few times and I'd love to see that improved in the future. Obviously MyOps does listen. It seems like they've made some dramatic improvements of the old version versus the new version. And I hope they'll continue to redesign this app and make it more useful in the future. Overall, I really like this device and I'm really happy to see the improvements and the new hardware that come in the kit. It just made this whole process a lot easier. We got the shot Marquetta needed for her project and we'll be covering that in a future video, so be sure you're subscribed so that you can see that in a future update. Finally, your first time playing with this device, make sure you budget some extra time to figure out the timing. It does take a little practice to kind of figure out the configurations and so make sure you've got a little extra time to do that. But once you get it figured out, it is fairly intuitive. And this is going to be the same with any device of this nature. So just plan some extra time. As always, guys, if you want to get your hands on this awesome device, the links are down below. And we'll have links to all of the rest of the gear, including cameras, strobes, and the works that we use today. If you found this useful, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know if you end up with one of these and if you try it out and how you like it or other high-speed photography things that you have done. Uh, we'd love to hear about that as well. So drop us some comments below. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next video.